Okay, so here we have a question, a true or false question that states, is sinus rhythm present in this following ECG? Okay, so here we have a standard 12 lead ECG. Okay, you can see our six limb leads here on the left side. Okay, so these six here. And then we have our six precordial leads here on the right side. We have two rhythm strips, lead V1 and lead two present here. Okay, so this is a standard 12 lead ECG so that we know that the uh, standard duration is 10 seconds. Okay, so from beginning all the way to end represents 10 seconds. Okay, now our question here is, is sinus rhythm present? And you would be surprised that uh, as many people that think that they know how to identify sinus rhythm, um, it often goes missed. It doesn't mean that just P waves are present, although that's mostly what we focus on, uh, but there's some other criteria. And I want you to understand uh, why we see what we see on the ECG every time you look at it. So it kind of, it's less memorization and more understanding. Okay. So finding sinus rhythm, this is very important. Okay. So sinus rhythm, there's quite a few things. And what I want to first do is go over uh, the conduction system. Okay. So let's kind of draw out our box diagrams that we use to simplify our teaching. So here's the right atrium. Okay. Then you have the left atrium, the right ventricle and left ventricle. Okay. Remember our conduction system starts up here in our sinus node, comes down to our internodal pathway to the AV node. We have our His bundle that splits into the right bundle branch. You have the left bundle branch that subdivides into a left anterior and posterior fascicle. Okay. Now when we talk about is sinus rhythm present, we're simply asking is the rhythm originating from the sinus node, okay, or sinoatrial node, you may also hear it as. Okay. So notice that the sinus node is in the right atrium. So what I want to do now is draw one of our quadrant systems. So here we have it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is then superimpose the right atrium on here. So I'm going to take this right atrium right here. Okay. And simply put it on here. Okay. So this is our right atrium. I'm not including any of this portion right? Because when I talk about sinus rhythm, I'm wondering if it's coming from there. Okay. Then we'll add our sinus node right here. Okay. All right. And you should know that the normal conduction is going to spread from the sinus node down the internodal pathways to the rest down here. Okay. So if we kind of erase this, what we have is our normal pathway should head in this direction towards the AV node. You also have a Bachman bundle that comes to the left side, but the main resultant vector is heading in this way, okay? And that's when we talk about that P wave axis, it's heading in this direction and is situated between zero degrees, okay? And positive 75 degrees. So this isn't the normal P wave axis. Remember, everything has an axis, okay? When we talk about the ST segment, the T wave, um, or uh, the P wave or the QRS complex, we are also having this P wave axis between zero and 75 degrees. Okay. So if we have normal axis, it should typically lie between this. All right. So we have that. And now what leads sit there? So let's just, let's redraw this here. Okay. So we have a little better picture. So again, we have our quadrant system. Okay. We have our right atrium we're drawing. Okay. Where our sinus node is present up here. And we said conduction should be heading in this direction between that zero degrees. Okay. And positive 75 degrees. Okay. Remember this is positive 90 down here. This would be plus or minus 180 degrees. And this is negative 90 degrees. Okay. See, we haven't even touched the ECG. I want you to understand this first before we get there. So remember, the lead sit here, lead one sits here, okay? AVF is down here at positive 90 degrees. You have lead two that sits here at positive 60 degrees, okay? And then you have lead three over here, all right? And then you have um, AVR up here, okay? And then in the horizontal plane, the precordial leads, you have V4, V5, and V6 in this region, okay? So why did I mention those leads? Well, I mentioned those leads is because notice that our vector is heading towards those leads. We have a positive atrial depolarization vector heading towards those leads, meaning that in these leads here, we should see positive 
P waves, okay? P waves because it's the atrial depolarizing. That's why we see, that's why we often look at the P waves first, okay? And then, so in these leads, you should see upright P waves. And because it's heading away from AVR, you should see negative P waves, okay? So just to summarize that, we said positive P waves, okay, in lead one, lead two, leads V4 through V6, okay? Remember, normal axis is between zero and 75, so it may include also AVF, okay? So we'll put plus or minus AVF and possibly three, okay? But notice that lead three is over here, okay? And the normal vector is heading in that direction. So not always will you see it in three. And then we should have a negative P wave in lead AVR, okay? So that's some of our basic criteria so far. So let's kind of look here at those leads. So lead one is right here, okay? And you can see these small, bright P waves, okay? Not so uh, easy to see, but there is one slightly there. Here's lead two, okay, a more clear there, okay? And then if we look at uh, lead three, which may also show up bright P waves, it certainly does here, okay? AVF is down here and you can see those P waves. And then in over here in these lateral leads, V4, V5, and V6, you can see these small P waves showing up here, okay? So they're there as well, all right? And then we said in AVR, we should have these negative P waves, which we certainly see here, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. Again, you're looking here at one, two, V4, V5, V6, AVR, okay? Plus or minus three or AVF. So hopefully that makes sense, but that's not it. So remember, it's not just those P waves that you have to see. You have to see those upright in those leads, inverted in AVR, okay? Next, we want to know if the P waves precede our QRS complexes, okay? And that we have one P wave for every QRS complex. So we have one P wave, and one QRS complex, one P wave, one QRS complex, P wave. Okay, so we have that one P wave for every QRS complex, okay? So that's something you may see, and you may also see in sinus rhythm a regular rhythm, meaning that the distance between our intervals, whether we use whatever interval, here is the R to R interval, these are all the same throughout, okay? So people may mention a regular interval. Okay, and whether it's normal bradycardic or tachycardic, that's based on the rate. Remember, normal in adults between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Over 100, we tend to call it tachycardia, and less than 60, bradycardia. Okay, now these last few things, this P wave, one to one ratio, and the regularity are not always true. Okay, so you can have an AV block, okay, with sinus rhythm present. All right, so remember, it's not only that, and if you have an AV block, you may, that means you have an irregular rhythm because you have dropped beats in some cases, unless it's a first degree, okay? So you can still have a first degree block with sinus rhythm present. So I, I want you to make sure you know that as well as AV dissociation. So say you have AV dissociation, as long as it's originating from the sinus node, we still say we have sinus rhythm present. And that's why I put these here in red because I don't want you to uh, latch onto those too much, okay? So based on this so far, we can certainly say that sinus rhythm is certainly present, okay? So again, make sure you know that why you see what you see on the ECG. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here uh, with the EKG guys, really kind of make you understand the ECG in and out, not just memorizing these things, but knowing why you see what you see on the ECG, okay? So if you have any questions, leave any comments below. Um, I, that's the end of this lecture, and I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. In fact, many of you have asked how you could help us out. Really, the best way you could do is simply subscribe and share this resource with your friends. And you get free access to more than 300 videos. There is also a community of over 270,000 of us like-minded individuals on Facebook. So stop over and join the EKG Guys uh, Facebook community. Many of you have also asked some questions. Leave them below or share them on Facebook, and we can try to answer them with a short video so everyone else can learn. We also have a number of new courses with corresponding videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for those. Last but certainly not least, your feedback is incredibly helpful and your kind words are always an encouragement on those long days. So let us know how we're doing. Thank you again for your support. It is truly appreciated. We are the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.